Today on The Irish Gardener, I want to show you how to draw bees and other beneficial pollinators into the garden using wildflower seeds. World Bee Day was celebrated on the 20th of May this year. Now we all know how critical these small but powerful winged creatures are and how we completely and utterly rely on them for our very existence. One of the best ways to, to attract bees into the garden is to sow some wild flower seed. They come in and the simpler the flower the better. The more ruffled the flower, the more double petals, the harder it is for them to feed in it. And of course, using a native wildflower mix like this one here is ideal because that's, that's really what they're going to feed on. You also have Sutton's do a great range of seeds. You've got uh, different types for pollinators, that's the Californian poppy. You have a mixed, uh, mixed batch of, of pollinator friendly or bee friendly plants there and you have the corn flower. They also do uh, a packet of seeds for predators. Now what are predators I hear you ask? Well predators are those things that we rely on in the garden to, to maintain our natural balance. So in other words, by attracting things like ladybirds into the garden, they'll feed on green fly and <clears throat> the natural balance is, is helped and we need to use less and ideally no damaging chemicals or insecticides in the garden. So native Irish flower seeds are what I'm going to go with here. And a couple of don'ts to start off with. So when you look at the soil, don't fertilize it. Do not under any circumstances use weed killer to kill off the, weed, the, the weeds uh, beforehand. Just pull them out by hand and give them a rake or a light hoe. Okay. Don't, don't sow into an existing grass or lawn area and don't sow into very weedy areas because there'll be just too much competition. You want the seed to get in contact with the soil, good contact with the soil, and then one of the do's, do water it. Rake it and water it. So, all I've done is really broken up the soil surface here, okay? That's all I'm doing, just breaking up the soil surface lightly. I'm not digging it, I'm not forking it, just giving it a scratch if you like, okay? And you'll see I deliberately didn't use the term a wildflower meadow, because I'm not creating a wildflower meadow. I don't, I don't have vast acres to create my meadow, but a little wildflower patch, and this could be done in the smallest of gardens. Even a big pot could do it. I just want to draw something in here and if, if we each do a small bit you know we can create a corridor of pollinating plants to support and sustain the bees throughout the whole country throughout the whole continent now it's about a gram per square meter so that's about the rate I don't know if you can even see me sewing it there don't go too heavily okay about a gram per square meter. This is a good mix and what you're going to get from a, a mixture like this, obviously if you use one of the Sutton's ones, you're going to get whatever's in the packet. So you're going to get corn flour or a mixture or the Californian poppies. But if you're using the native mixture like I'm using there, you're going to have a mix of annuals, biennials and perennials. And what that means is you're going to get a lot of colour in the first year from your annual plants as they, they come into, an annual quite simply means a plant which, which completes its life cycle in one year. So by the end of this summer, they'll be in full flower and sustaining the bees. Then next year, you'll get some of the annuals that have set seed and you'll also get the first of the biennials. What you'd expect to see is a lot of the oxide daisy. You know that beautiful white daisy with the yellow center. You'd expect to see a lot of that. But don't worry, because in year three and onwards, you'll see less of that and more of the perennials as they begin to get a hold in it as well. Uh, it's not an instant, oh my God. It is a long-term thing. But believe me, it's not difficult and you'll love it. Now I've put in the seed, so I just want to give a gentle rake over and I'm going to do my little rain dance on it. And all this is for is to make sure that the seed is making good contact with the soil. And I'm doing it before I water it, as you'll see. Why is that? Well, you might have guessed. If I do a rain dance on wet soil, all the soil and the seed will quite simply stick to my shoe and I'll be bringing wildflower seed mixed with soil into the carpet and her indoors will be less than impressed. So that's it, it really is as simple as that. A small bit of water and this is probably, I know it's the most basic of things, but it's probably the most important element that you want to give to it because without water, they can't survive, the seeds can't survive and they're not going to germinate.
Within a couple of short weeks, you'll see germination, even probably even at this time of the year, a few days. The ideal time to do this is March, April, or if, if you miss that window of opportunity, you do it again in September. But water is key. Give them a good drench. You can't overwater, particularly during the summer months. And don't just give them a water today and forget about them. These will need water, you know, every day for the first few weeks. Nature will take care of it on some of the days, but not every day. So what do you do then once the wildflowers have germinated and flowered and established? There's really low, no, very little I suppose, not no, there's very little maintenance to a wildflower patch. At the end of this season, come September, I'm going to trim them. I'm just going to get a garden shears and trim them down to a couple of inches from the ground. I'm going to leave the trimmings there for a few weeks. And this will be true no matter how big or small your area. So even if you're doing an acre, do the same. Obviously you won't be with the, the hedge trimmers, it'll be a strimmer. But let, let the trimmings there for a couple of weeks so any seed that is there will fall back into the soil. Then you remove the trimmings, put them in the compost bin. Those seeds will, will stay and hopefully germinate next year. And you do that every year. So every year, come as I say, September, October time, when, the, when it's at the end of the season, cut it back, let the trimmings there for a few weeks, lift them and off you go. I expect to see some nice annual colour here this year. Next year, as I say, there'll be more annuals, some of the biennial, biennials, uh, a lot of the oxide daisy in year two, as I say. Year three then, I'm going to see the perennials taking centre stage. Alternatively, if you don't have an area to sow some wildflower seeds or you don't want to, to give up part of your garden to that wild look, if you want, you can grow other pollinators, and particularly if you want to get kids, even small kids, interested in growing and interested in the garden. These are nasturtiums, and the reason I single them out, number one, of course, the bees love them, but the kids also love them because you can see the seeds, they're, they're quite a bit bigger than the ones I was using for the wildflowers. Just get a little pot, and these are these are um, compostable pots. You, you plant them pot and all, you're not, not using plastic and you're not creating waste. You can see the seed and you, you put them about half an inch or an inch into the compost. You keep them watered, which I'll do now. And then you plant them straight into a, a pot or a container or a hanging basket. But the reason the kids love them is because it's quick. They go from a seed like this to germination within, I'd say a week. And you'll be planting them out and enjoying the flowers on them would say four or five weeks and the kids love that because it keeps their interest. I remember as a small child rushing home from school to see if my seeds had germinated. I get such a kick out of it. I'm, I'm beyond school now, I'm 47, but I still get a great kick out of watching the germination the minute they come through the soil and then every day saying, have they grown a bit, have they grown a bit? And of course the nasturtiums, you can see it happening in front of your eyes because they're putting on a couple of leaves every day and I'm just going to get the, these guys out of the way so I can give them a drop of water. And then you quite simply let the magic of nature and soil take over and within a, a couple of short weeks we'll have masses of flowers that are loved by the bees. As I say the kids will get great kick and also caterpillars will munch away happily on the leaves and they'll turn into course to beautiful butterflies later in the year. It's all about maintaining the natural balance and if you want you can eat the flowers of the nasturtium too. Brightens up a salad. They're not really for me to taste. I'm not a huge fan of them but they're very very colourful on the plate.